Peterson, do you have any comments on the Nazi presence at your protest? The presence of Nazis and white supremacists assaulting people at your protest. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I don't like Nazis. Pronoun misuse may become actionable through the human rights tribunals and the courts. And the remedies? Monetary damages, non-financial remedies, for example, ceasing the discriminatory practice or reinstatement to the job, and public interest remedies, for example, changing hiring practices or developing non-discriminatory policies and procedures, jail time is not one of them. Jordan, you're not going to go to jail if you keep this up. Do you find that uh, reassuring? What if I don't pay the fine? Then what? Can someone please explain to Jordan B. Peterson that there's a difference between freedom of speech and freedom from consequence? Do you agree there's a difference? Well, certainly there's a difference. And are you prepared to suffer the consequences that society may deem you need to suffer because of your views? I'm, yes, I'm prepared to do that. What does so, that entail? Are you open to learning? Well, hang That's on. That's not the question. Hang on, that, that wasn't the question. It's That's true. Right. Well, so what am I willing to do? Uh, you know, well, I think that the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal is probably obligated by their own tangled web to, to bring me in front of it. If they find me, I won't pay it. If they put me in jail, I'll go on a hunger strike. I'm not thought, doing this. That's that. Mm -hmm. I'm not using the wor words that other people require me to use, especially if they're made up by radical left-wing ideologues. Now, if our society comes to some sort of consensus over the next while about how we'll solve the pronoun problem, let's call it, and that becomes part of popular parlance and it seems to solve the problem properly without sacrificing the distinction between singular and plural and without requiring me to memorize an impossible list of an indefinite number of pronouns, then I would be willing to reconsider my position. But I'm also partly um, opposed to this because it's been made mandatory and has the whole weight of the law behind it. It's like, this is a very bad idea. I believe this is a very bad idea. And I believe that the reason this has caused so much noise, tremendous amount of noise, tremendous amount of attention on YouTube, is because there are things that, that are at stake in this discussion, despite its surface nature, that's, that, that strike at the very heart of our civilization. Those are the sorts of problems that trans people face every day, being out of housing, being considered, you know, considering suicide. These are really big problems. My, my refusal to, prono to use pronouns because left-wing activists want me to use them has nothing to do with whether or not trans people are having difficulties in society. And I'd also like to point out that I've had many well, letters of support. Problem, isn't it? I've had many letters of support from trans people. And, and they tell me that the trans... Uh, the trans activists don't support them, and most trans people Jordan, actually wanted to be referred to as he or she. Doesn't mean they that weren't you my are friends. Untransphobic. They just weren't my friends. Just because you know a few people, just because you've talked they, to a few trans them. people, you you don't know the trans community like the trans community does. You've got no idea no, what it's like. The trans, trans. Professor Pete, let's, trans, let's, let's, Professor Peterson. I'm sorry to interrupt. Let's yeah. let's uh, let Professor Peterson finish his thought, please. All right. So, the the trans activists aren't. Um, aren't proper representatives of the trans community because they haven't been elected by the trans community. They're, Nobody elected they're noisy. you either, Jordan. I'm not speaking for anyone except myself and on behalf of other people perhaps who want, to use, who want to maintain the right to free speech. I'm not claiming that I'm a representative of white people or white men or any other group. I'm speaking on behalf of myself. And so I'm not taking... But I'm Professor, not Professor Peterson, let me jump in there though because we have seen an evolution of language. There are words that we don't use not anymore. Not by legislation. Describe. Well, legislation or not, there are words that have evolved. We don't use, for example, I'm Asian. I would bristle if someone called me Oriental. That is an evolution of, of how we use words. How is this different, whether legislated or not? I just said how not, it was different. I, I understand legislation I, is I understand, how it's different. I understand legislatively, but if at the heart of it is to allow a student to study free of what they feel is discrimination, why not help that along? I already made my, my case for why not help that along. I believe that this legislation is extraordinarily dangerous and there's other elements of it too that we haven't even got to in our society yet like the protection for gender expression and I've looked at gender expression in the Ontario Human Rights Code and as far as I can tell gender expression is best summarized in, in a single word, fashion. When people talk about common ground, it's got to be founded on some kind of truth. And when we have feminists saying, I don't believe in the biological differences between women, w men and women, well, that, that's why it's controversial. <laughs> Where do you go from there? That's why it's controversial to say what you're saying, and it's, it's controversial to say, hold on a second, maybe uh, a girl on testosterone what? therapy winning high school wrestling meets is a problem. That's controversial. Yeah, maybe that's a bad idea. It's just possible that that's not a very good idea. You know, I mean, it's hard to imagine that that could be the case. But, well, in this idea that I don't believe in the biological differences between men and women, it's like, 
well, what do you mean by believe? <laughs> exactly. It's like you act, you act out your belief. It's you true. know, I mean, what, what the hell does that mean? And, and what do you mean? See, what do you mean by belief? What do you mean by biology? And what do you mean by gender? Like as soon as you put those three co concepts together in a sentence that says, I don't believe in the biological difference between the genders, you throw the meaning of all three of those words up into the air so far that no one can tell what you're talking about, including you. Yeah. And that's the goal, though, I think a lot of the time. I think it's pretty- Oh, definitely. Definitely. The goal, part of the goal is an all out assault on the categorical structure. We need a question. Yes. Okay. okay. I mean, My like I said, you're doing fine, do you but think, it's just too yes. much. Like, I can't keep it do straight. Do you think that your behavior risks politicizing it, and do you think that politicization is justified? I think my behavior risks politicizing it, yes. I would rather it not be politicized, and I'm doing what I can to manage that risk. However, it's become political in my country because the government implemented compelled speech legislation. So... I wasn't complaining about that before it became political. Now, and there, are, there is a time, even when you're detached in some sense from the political realm, that you can't be detached anymore. Well, I'm not happy with the fact that this has become politicized. You could say that I haven't done a stellar job in ensuring in every possible manner that this has remained neutrally apolitical. Probably true. You know, but I'm not particularly unhappy with the way things have gone so far. So, and I'm not happy with the radical left. And so, if they're irritated at me, so much the better, as far as I'm concerned. So, have I conducted myself perfectly? It's like, uh, undoubtedly no. So, um, I'm, I've got more than my fair share of faults, and a temper is one of them. But... Um, I'm muddling through. Do you think a trans woman is a real woman? <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies, and they have female genitalia, and they have an XX chromosome, and, and I think the biological markers are relevant. It doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that people should be treated with respect and dignity if they happen not to fit easily into a gender category. That's a different issue. Right. But, but it's a matter of definition, and, and I actually think it's a foolish argument in some sense, because what do you mean by real? Well, I mean, you've just clarified that, though. You, you, you don't think um, that a trans woman is a woman. And do you, do you think that that is what is behind or explains your opposition to this idea of a law mandating you to use a no. preferred pronoun is because you don't actually believe that that's the truth, that a trans woman is a woman and therefore you can't use that pronoun? No, that's not my argument at really? all. Really? Yeah, really. My yeah, argument is that the no, government your shouldn't argument compel is. voluntary speech. No, but I know what your argument is, and no, you've made it very really clearly. It. But, no, but behind, that's exactly it. There's but the no motivation behind, behind it. There's no motivation it. behind it. But you don't believe I wouldn't put everything on my online in my life to take the stance I did, unless I had thought that through very deeply. And I've thought it through very deeply. There aren't hidden motivations that have to do with some arbitrary prejudice against trans people. Okay. It's purely, pure and simply this. There's never been a time in English common law history where the government compelled speech and the Canadian government dared to do that. And that was unacceptable. And they masked it with this show of, of compassion for the oppressed. And I don't buy it. Look, look at it this way. All right. Women are much more likely to try to commit suicide. And men are much more likely to kill themselves. And the reason for that is that men use lethal force and women don't. Now that's a big difference. Okay, so then you say, well, women manifest aggression towards themselves and to others, but they don't use lethal force. They don't use physical force the same way men do. So they have to do it some other way. Why do well, they what have are the other to ways? do something some other way? That, like, because you can people take are your aggressive. Hobbesian war against, you know, so you're basically a Hobbesian. Life is uh, no, war I'm half all and against half. All. Half and half. Half Hobbes, half Rousseau. That's why I'm not an ideologue. Because I don't think that people are good or evil. I think they're both. I don't think that culture is security or tyranny. I think it's both. And I don't think that nature is benevolence 
or catastrophe. I think it's both, and that's why I'm not an ideologue. I mean, and I've spoken with no shortage of trans people, and, you know, my proclivity has been without exception so far to address them in the manner that seems most socially appropriate under the circumstances. Now, you asked, I mean, you know, you asked a specific question, which was, do I have special expertise that I might share with, with other people? Because you're doing Martin Luther, and I think that these issues are a little subtler than those, and so well, I'm what just makes waiting. you what makes you think that you're doing the kids that are grandstanding any favors by going along with their manipulation? Because I can't decide which ones those are. Well, I just then, have my gut instincts, well, and that's not good enough. Look, fair enough, but you have a type one and type two error problem. So one error is that you don't call students what they deserve to be called. That's one error, and the other error is that you you call students what they want to be called, even though they don't deserve it. And so what you're trying to do, optimally, is to minimize both those errors. And to do that, you have to take a middle route. Now, what you've decided to do, and I'm not criticizing it, is you've decided to allow for the possibility 100% of one of those errors because you think it's a less significant error. And, you know, you might be right, but it's not like you're acting in an error-free manner. You've just decided to minimize one form of error at the expense of the other. Because I would say you're allowing... Uh, what would you call it, attention-seeking and somewhat narcissistic undergraduates to gain the upper hand over you in your class. Well, it's not, it's not an essentially bad idea. It's a terrible to challenge idea. Challenge the tyranny a... of the patriarchy and the West. It is an absolutely terrible idea when you assume that the fundamental reality of the West is patriarchal tyranny. It's like, compared to what exactly? Our societies are more free and more productive than any other societies in the world and than any other societies that have ever existed. Now, that doesn't mean they're without their faults. No, but if you look and you say, look at the facts and you look at who's in power... And who and is who in who power exactly? And what, what exactly do you mean by that? The, let's say Political men... Political power. Mainly men. It depends on the domain. It's certainly not the case in, in, in anything that has to do with the provision of health. It's not the case in education. No, but say political power. At say the very upper Mr. echelons. Trump. Yes. Yes, at the very upper echelons, yeah. polit, polit, politics are dominated by I mean, men. What's the point? Does that make it world, a patriarchal yeah. tyranny? Well, it certainly makes it patriarchal to a certain extent. Well, and so when women participate in that patriarchal process, is that also a patriarchy? So when we have healthcare system that's dominated by women, as we do now, is that a patriarchy? No. Why not? I wouldn't call it a patriarchy. Because it because doesn't involve a, men. Yeah. Isn't it the structure that's patriarchal, or is it the gender that makes the difference? Clearly you think it's the structure? No, I don't buy the whole patriarchy idea, or the tyranny idea. I think it's, I think it's absolutely appalling. The idea that we have a hierarchical structure in the West is true. The idea that hierarchies tend towards corruption and deception and stultification across time is true. It's certainly the case that we need to be awake and criticize our institutions, but that is not the same thing as calling the West a patriarchal, ty patriarchal tyranny. And words matter, especially among academics who should be very, very careful with their words and who aren't. Well, first of all, if you don't have a purpose, so, it isn't that your life becomes neutral in a, in a meaningless sense. It's that your life becomes characterized by unbearable suffering. Because the baseline condition of life is something like unbearable suffering.